Hey guys, it's Meme, and today we're playing with the Explosion Card Punch Board from We Are Memory Keepers. This one's going to be interesting. I've not tried it fully yet. I played a tiny bit, and I did not complete the project, and I thought, okay, I'm going to go ahead and film this for you guys. So, in the box, what you get is this cool little stamp set so that you can show people what to do with the project when you send it to them. So, pull and hold, okay? You get 50 rubber bands to use for your explosion box, and then instructions. So let's jump right in. The thing about We Are Instructions is they look a little bit daunting because when you open the page, there's a lot of writing. But truth be told, you don't care about all the writing. You only care about the language that you speak. So if you look, and I, there might be a glare because we're not studying yet. I just want to point. If you look, there's a photo. And underneath that photo are four sentences. But only one of those will apply to you. So it looks like a lot of reading, but it's not a lot of reading. So it's one picture, one sentence, one picture, one sentence. Okay? So let's start with the first one. I'm going to see if I can get the glare off where you can see this. Number one shows a 12 by 12 inch piece of cardstock. And it says, to create a box, trim cardstock to 12 by 12. Okay? So I've already got that. I didn't have to trim it. I just have it. Then it says, align the right edge of the paper to the raised edge indicated as box on the board. Now, let me show you this. When I started to play with this for the first time, I struggled a tiny bit here because I couldn't find those indicators. But here's why. They're embossed in the plastic. So once I found that, I'm good. This says box. This says envelope. This says tray. You can't see that on camera, but when you get it at home, that's where you'll find it. So we're going to put this in um, to the box area. So basically, it's just pushed up into the tray. Okay, now it tells me to score the paper at all the numbers one through eight. So one through eight. So let's do that. We're going to go with number one. I'm being very careful because I don't want to run off the page because my pa my cardstock's not super thick and I do not want to rip it with my score tool. All right, now I skipped some. Did you see me skip some? Let me show you why because those all go in the same direction. These others kind of come at a different angle. So I'm gonna turn it so my hand is more comfortable. So four, seven, and eight. Now what I wanna do is go back and do five because I skipped it. Five goes straight up. All right. Now the instructions tell me to flip the page, okay? and then score again. So let me show you. So I'm gonna flip the page. I think this is important. So there's the flip, okay? Then it tells me to rotate 90 degrees. So I'm gonna rotate 90 degrees, and then it says align it to the edge here, just again, okay? So I flipped the page. I think the flip is important. I'm not sure I haven't gotten this far. So just do the flip because it says it. Now we're gonna score all of the marks again. I'm pretty sure that flip means something, but we'll find out. Because I don't think they would have told us to flip it if it if we weren't, you know, if it wasn't a thing. All right, six is already scored, okay? So I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to do four, five. Like I said, six is done, seven, and then eight. Oh, eight is done too. I can see it. Okay, now it tells us that we're going to cut on some of those score lines. So let me move this guy out of the way for a minute and get my scissors out. Now, let me show you. In this picture, it has red lines, and it says to me, cut along lines indicated in red. Use score lines as guides to cut the final shape, okay? So, I'm going to cut all these red lines. I'm going to leave this where I can see it as I go to cut. Okay, so I want to look at my piece and make sure I have it laying the same way. Okay, so the scissors start right here. Let's start our scissors right there too. So I'm gonna cut this score line away right here. Y'all, there is something on my scissors. It looks like it got into some ink. Let me clean these, because it's gonna be everywhere. Okay, so I got those cleaned up. Then my next cut, so I did this one. I'm gonna leave the little diamond at the top and cut off the next corner. So that's not too hard, so cut off this corner. You guys probably cannot see these score lines. You want to think about that when you're doing this at home. Make sure you use something you can see the score lines on or pencil them in or something. All right, there's that one. I want to leave this diamond and cut this edge off. So that's not too bad. But so far, we've just cut the, the corners off. You can totally do this in your trimmer if you're not comfortable with scissors. This is Those are just straight lines. Okay, next. It looks as though I'm going to cut up 
Okay, let me see if you can see this. There's two score lines here on this side, but it is telling me that I don't need this bottom score, I need this top score. So I'm gonna cut there. So I will make that cut. Then it tells me to go up and kind of take a box out. So I'm gonna go right inside here and take this little box. It's pretty interesting. If you had to do this on your regular scoreboard, this would have been a lot. I like that at least they have the score lines all done for you. I'm being careful because I can hardly see my score lines either. I gotta be honest. Okay. And then I need to do the one more slice down. But this time, let me show you. This time it's telling me that there's a tab over here. You see how it extends out? So I need to make sure I do that as well. It's really not hard to understand. I mean, it's, a, it's much like whenever I do a tutorial for you guys and teach y'all how to do the cuts and where to do them. All right, one last cut right here. Okay, this wasn't so bad. I was afraid it was going to be. So I was like, that's a lot of red lines, but that wasn't bad at all. So this is what we're looking for, okay? So that's what I need. Let's see what it says to do next. So that was number six. Now it says the paper should look like this after cutting, and it does. Pretty cool. Line up, okay, now we're going back to the board. Let me get the board. All right, bring that in. Oh, look, 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 look. This is the um, shape we just did. Okay, so now it says, line up the edge of the paper along the raised edge indicated as box on the back side of the board and punt on the back side. Okay, so if I'm looking at the picture, we're not using this section, we're using this section, the back side. Oh, look, there's a shape. Okay, let's see. All right, so in the picture, it's got the non-tabbed edge laying here. Well, look at there. Okay, now what did it say to do? It said, line up the edge of the paper along the raised edge, indicated as box side board, and punch. Okay, so I've got it there, punch. Look, it's a heart punch. That's super cute. Okay, I'm so easily distracted. Now it says, flip the paper and repeat. Oh, look. Okay, look, it's still that untabbed section. So if we flip the paper, oh, see? Okay, okay, okay. This is making sense to me. Two hearts. Gotcha. Now it says, line up the edge of the paper along the raised edge on the other side and repeat. Now, here's what's interesting. This time, it's not. Sh it's showing me the tabbed edge is out here, but I think I need to be punching this section I haven't punched. I'm going to just decide that because if I look at this picture, the tabbed edge is punched as well. Yeah, so I think I need to... Just go with it. I'm going to do the same thing, but on the other side. Let's just do that. Here, flip, and here. Because I can see in the picture that what I'm going for, if you look right here, is hearts in each one of those points. Okay? All right, so I did that. Now, rip paper notches above punched hearts. What? Okay. Paper notch. Rip. <laughs> rip. That makes me nervous. Rip. Where's Brenda? She needs to be ripping, not me. Okay, I've done that. Let's go to step 13. Step 13 says, glue triangle edges and bottom edge. What? <laughs> Let me look at the picture. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm, okay. Might could have been better instructions, but I'll show you what I'm seeing. In the I'm just going to go by the picture, okay? Look at all these little hearts we have left over. Those are so cute. We can use those for something. Y'all know I like the little off cuts. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I think it should tell me to score. Um, and what it's doing here is it's turning these points in. I mean, I think it should tell me to fold on my score lines. So I'm going to fold these and get them prepped. So this needs to go. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to fold and line everything up here. So we end it with a nice straight box. Okay, now we're gonna fold this one line. I don't wanna do it. I'll do it back. I think it's back. I think it's back. If it's not, we can turn it. All right, try to be straight here. Okay, 
because what's going to happen here, oh, it was forward, y'all, but it'll go. What's going to happen here is these guys are going to get glued together like that and become a flap inside the box. So let's do that over here too. Let's bring this guy forward and crease it down. Okay. Then we might could just turn this flap over. Let's try. Turn this flap this way. Score it there. Turn the flap the other way and score it the other way. I'm just going based on pictures at this point. Yeah, look. Okay. 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 So we want that. All right. The next thing we want is we want to fold this line. This is one of the box, box sides. So we'll fold and crease this line. Okay. Then we're going to fold this tab upwards. You'll see all this when you make it. Oh, and then this glues together like this. Okay, so let's glue these guys shut because that's what they do. They glue these shut in the picture. I think I'm making this harder than it is. If I had watched a video on this, this would have been a lot easier, but I didn't watch anything. I wanted to do it kind of as a first look, like for you guys to see me do it for the first time because I think y'all like whenever I have struggles. <laughs> Not really, but I think you'd rather you'd rather it seen done with, you know, just like you would. You get it, you take it out of the box, and what would it be like? It's not that bad, and like I said, had I watched something, this would be a lot easier. All right, so those are done, and now I can close. Oh, no, I can't. Hold on. I didn't do that the right direction, so let's lay that down like that and close it. And then let's do the same here. For that. Oh, and look, this will just lift up and glue right there. I want to retrain that one. Didn't like the way I did it. Okay, so let's put glue on this tab. Does it tell me to? Yes. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not getting ahead. It did tell me to do this. All right, so I'm going to lay this down and lay this down, and now we've made a little box. And it looks like this. Not too bad. We got the little tabs in there. Okay, now it says fold and form a cube, which is what we did. Insert rubber band in slots. Use two rubber bands for a stronger explosion. Hmm. Okay, let me get the rubber bands. I like these rubber bands. They're super thick. Look at that. All right, so it goes into this slot, which is the ones we tore. Let me see if I can do it from underneath where you can see what I'm doing. So drop that into there. And, and then drop the other side into the other slot. You know where it said to rip the little edges? Look at that, that's not bad at all. Okay, should we try it? Let's just see what happens. So you flatten this out. <gasps> this dude is tight. Y'all watch, I'm gonna let go of it, watch. That dude is tight, that's cool. Okay, we're gonna put that aside. Now for the next step. Okay, for the next part, this is really interesting to me. So this has a tray that pulls it out of the envelope. So it says for the tray part, you need a piece that is five by five. So to create a tray, trim cardstock to five by five. Align the right edge of the paper to the raised edge indicated as tray on the board. So I'm gonna, okay, so it's this little section right here. So look, that just, just sticks right in there and it's not going anywhere. And now it says, oh look y'all, it's just one score. So I'm gonna score it at five inches. That's what's so cool to me about these boards. It's, uh, they're all just done for you, which is awesome. All right, score paper, flip, let's go to the next one. Okay, then flip it over and do that again on five. That's easy, I don't wanna spend a lot of time on that. Now it says, line up edge of paper along raised edge indicated as tray on the back side. So we go back here and it says tray, where does it say tray? Right here. And it's got my score lines in the picture going sideways. You see that? So it tells me to line it up with tray. So I'm aligning over here and punch. So I got a little heart there. Then it says flip and repeat. This is making a lot of sense to me because I'm looking at pictures. So it may not be to you guys, but it is to me. Okay, now look at this. This is so cute. Look, now we're gonna do a little notch trim. Let's bring my scissors back. And we're just gonna trim to the bottom of the heart and here. We take that off, do the same thing on the other side. That's so cute. I love how these things just work. I don't like the way I trimmed this one. I'm gonna trim this one a little bit more. I left a tiny bit of that little tab on there. Okay. So now it says fold along the score line. So it's the bottom score line, by the way. Now we got more hearts, more hearts. So the bottom score line, like so. 
this is what pulls the box. From what I understand, this guy, when you flatten him out, I didn't flatten him right, he flattens this way. Um, let me do him on the table. He is, that rubber band is so stinking tight. So what I'm assuming is this goes in here like this and that goes in the envelope and then the person pulls this out. Cute, huh? Okay, let's keep going. So we got that one done. Now let's go to the next page. Envelope time. Eight by eight. Let's trim a piece. So I got a piece that's eight by eight and now it says align right edge of paper to raise edge indicated as envelope. That's right there. So I'm gonna align that just like so. And it says score lines A and B. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> score, um, let's see, envelope score line A and B, which is three and four. Okay, they clarify. So three and four. So we'll do three there. And I'm going to turn it a little bit and do four. Now the instructions say, Rotate paper 180 degrees clockwise and repeat step two and three. I'm using the picture to help me here, but 180 is like that, and then three and four. That makes perfect sense. That's easy. That's easy. Okay. Oh, now we're going to punch. Okay. So now it says align the left edge of the paper along the raised edge indicated as envelope on the back side. There's envelope. Which edge? Doesn't matter, I don't think. I have to do all of them, I think. Yeah, we do. So then punch. Y'all, look at this. Is that why it was a heart? So we can get both. Is that so brilliant? So we get the envelope shape and that little heart. I think that's pretty brilliant. Then it says rotate and repeat. Mm, you got to flip rotate and repeat on some of them. You'll see because your score lines will line up. See, like this, if I do it right here, my score line's out here. But if I flip it, it's where it needs to be. Oops. Y'all, they even, whoever designed this even knew that an eight by eight piece would hang out right here and go past this little slot. Like, come on, these things are brilliant. Whoever comes up with these. Brilliant. So now we have an envelope. Check that out. Here's our little offshoots there. All right, let's see what it says next. We did, that was five and six. So seven, fold and glue. Oh, cute. Okay, there's even more. Okay, so <laughs> fold it, crease it, and glue it. So let's do that. Let's build an envelope. Now, the one thing I don't love, and I think a lot of you guys feel the same way with me about this, I do not love this point we get from these envelopes. A lot of companies leave this. Now, I, you can tuck this in or out. I usually tuck these little pieces in and glue like this, but I don't love this point on here. So what you can do is cut that off straight, but because I'm doing this the way they're showing it today, I'm not going to, because that it could be a design feature. I don't know, but I don't like that point, but that's just me. All right, let's glue our envelope down. If I see that I don't need it in future projects, I would cut that off. You'll have to do you on that one, but I'm not a big fan of it. I guess you could fold it. Let's see if we need it for anything. All right, so close that down. Another thing, did you notice how I pushed up on my glue? Let me tell you why. If you have too much glue in there, it's best to push it up so that the excess comes out and doesn't go into your envelope. So push from the bottom. That way you're not gluing your envelope shut. All right, there's our envelope. And now it says, look at this part, this is fun. Punch confetti using a scrap piece of paper and gather the scraps from underside of the board. So check this out. That little heart is like quadruple fold. We're gonna use it like for everything. So let's get a scrap. The colors I'm using in this box today, it's just for demo purposes. All right, so now it says I can just put this in here and punch a bunch of hearts out so I can have some confetti. I do have to put it a little bit weird. And look, if you have another punch, you can do your own thing and get your own confetti. All right, I got a stack of confetti here. Probably could use more than that, but that's what I got. All right, let's see what it says next. If we flip the page, it says, oh, we need to stamp. So let me get some a block and some ink. All right, let me tell you guys something. These stamps, and this happens a lot of times with these kind of punch boards and things like that, 
These are what I call silicone or acrylic. They're one or the other. And look, they stretch like a rubber band. What that means is when you use them, they can flatten if you overpress. So what you want to do is put them on your block. And when you stamp them, do not squish, squish, squish because it will overpress. So what I'm going to do is load those up, grab some ink. And now we're punching in two, I mean, we're stamping in two places. We're stamping the bottom of the envelope and we're stamping the top of our tray. So I'm gonna move the envelope out of the way for a second. And on the top of the tray, you wanna stamp pull here. So that, that way the recipient knows. This is something y'all love because you always say, how does the recipient know how to do this? This little tray idea, super, super cute. So I'm gonna stamp that at the top. I do not know if I'm lined up very well. I'm way behind it, so we'll see what happens. Oh, I didn't do a good job, but there's pull. I forgot, I didn't get the um, uh, the arrow in that. <laughs> and let's do fold here. Now, if you wanted to, you might, or if you thought about it, you might want to stamp before you fold. This doesn't say fold here. It says hold here. And I got ink where I don't want it. That's one thing. There's a lot of excess on this stamp. It's not cut right to the edge. So you'll want to get any excess ink off of there so it doesn't get on your project. Let's see if I can do this one better. Much better. Hold here, pull there. Okay, let's load it up. I just want to load it up. So it says, number three, take the tray and insert box into it. Now listen, you would decorate this, obviously. You would, you know, put something cute on here, decorate it up like a party um, to make it look exciting. So there it is. You press it down and put it in the tray. Then it says, insert the confetti. <laughs> you have to hold it down. Insert the confetti above the box. So you want to put the confetti on the top here. And that will probably, let me pull that back out. That will probably fall into the tray. All right. And then you want to load it into the box. Now here's the thing. Loading it is going to be probably the hardest part. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't, oh, it wants to pop. It wants to pop, y'all. Okay, so let's close it up. And then send it. Now, do not put glitter in here, y'all. Don't do that to anybody. That is the cruelest thing. Glitter goes everywhere. Confetti is cute. Confetti is easy to pick up. And the bigger the confetti, even better. All right, it's time to open it. So you send this to somebody and it says, hold here, pull here. Let's see what happens. Oh, look how cute that is. It flies everywhere. And you would have this decorated. Confetti even went on my arm everywhere, y'all. That is super cute. And I gotta be honest, this takes all the work out of it. You might feel like, if you're a person that doesn't enjoy punch boards, you might feel like that was a lot of work, but look what we created in just this few minutes without even having to think. Like, and the more you do this, the better it gets. This is a punch board that you will use all the time. There's not a celebration you couldn't use this for. Birthdays, anniversaries, graduations, new car, new home. Um, do you send cards for people who get a new car? I did not get a single card. <laughs> This is super cool. I hope you enjoy this punch board. Y'all know I'm a punch board fanatic. I've never met one I don't like. Eh, that may not be true. There are some that aren't my favorite, but this guy, I really think we'll use this a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you want to pick one of these up, we have them available in the store. They just came in. They're super cute. So just um, open the link below. And don't forget, if you're a Stamp Club member, you can use your 15% off discount on these. So be sure to do that as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. This is super fun. Love me a We Are Punch Board. Thanks to We Are for keeping bringing these guys out because they're super cool. I just love them. And please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you like videos like this, give me a thumbs up. Don't you like seeing these new machines used and stuff like that? Give me a thumbs up. That way Vinny will let me keep bringing them in. <laughs> Thanks so much guys. And until next time, bye now.